to our last phone call. <laughs> I don't know the girl on the phone said three way call, but then the shit started acting funny as hell. Like I couldn't call back. Yeah, I figured that too. I said that. I said, "Ooh, they bad at my story." Oh, yeah, they... that shit out of nowhere, I'm like three way call alert, and then the phone started acting funny as hell. But then I'm, I'm like, "Yo, it's crazy because I checked my account. I'm like, oh, I got throw some money on the phone. That's why I ain't called yesterday. I waited for the money to clear now." Oh, okay, cool, cool. I said, "Yeah, uh huh." That was that was right on time. So, you want to hear the last bit of the story? Yeah. See, they niggas cut us off. <laughs> so basically, make a long story short, they released me on my own recognizance that day because they didn't really tell me what they were, what was it. They said they was going to give me a court date. So I end up, that was right after I had, you know, Dreezy. I end up going, getting yeah. a court date and went down there. And then I waited. We they called, they called me and the judge was looking at the paper, the prosecutor looking at the paper, and they couldn't put nothing together because nothing made sense. they like, why is she here? Like, it's no right. charges. Like, they was looking at it like, okay. Okay, I said, listen, they like, you could go. I said, uh uh-uh, I'm not leaving until you gave me a paper that said I was here today. That you said I could go because I'm not leaving here. Y'all put a warrant on me and say I didn't come for whatever this is. Still don't know what it was, what they had me in the system for. And it's out the system because, you know, I get my background check every year. Now, that was related to exactly what you were saying when they go after the baby mamas. Right. You didn't even know that happened. Most chicks like, oh my god, no, oh my god. And then be like, listen, he do this and that, 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 and the third. Mm. He got this here and there. And I ain't got nothing to do with none of that. <laughs> yeah, like. Excuse me. Like, I'm minding my business. I don't. I know nothing. That's when I sound like a Haitian. That, but, but that shit boil you down to. This shit boil you down to. What you need to know that they can't do and what they can't do. People need to really study the law. Like, people need to really sit back and understand. Because it's crazy, because when I was just home, like, you know niggas doing what they doing, so we jumping in and out of different cars, running shit like that, but we, like, yo, we can't, like, my police talking to me, like, niggas really had to look into that shit. Like, man, they not even allowed to talk to the passengers, like, so once we learned that shit, and we, we sat there and learned this, that, and the third, we used to get pulled over, and the police like, yo, where your ID at? Like, man, you, like, uh, why are you pulling us over? Oh, you speed. I'm not driving. You're only supposed to talk to the driver. The license, insurance, registration, everything valid. You cannot talk to me. I say, yo, you're not doing nothing. You don't smell nothing, nothing. You cannot talk to me. I'm not giving you my ID. Not cop be quiet. Just back up. So, in my opinion, you know what they do that for, even though they're not supposed to? What they do is engage you and get acquiescence from you. So, once you start engaging them and you give them any suspicious anything in the, that engagement, then you open the door for them to start coming at you like, oh, he's suspicious. And that's where they get the without your permission. So, you're right. You got to, from the door, know your law and understand your position. And I think a lot of black young men getting hip to that, you know. I don't know. It, it, it's just, and it's crazy because it's simple shit. And like, not knowing the law, you think that it's something big and crazy, like, it's hard. Like, it was really simple shit. Like, exactly. Really simple Exactly. I'll be, I be showing people how to go do that basic law research in my program because they be needing it for real estate. And I told you, I told them, once you learn this skill, you're going to be able to apply this anyway. You can look at any law. And you just got to know how to read it. What made people aggy with it, though, is that it's so redundant. And then they take pieces right. and pieces like they like refer to C-123. And if you don't go to C-123, yeah. you didn't get the full understanding of what they really right. saying. Uh-huh. Yeah, so they catch us keep up. Going, keep they do that shit on purpose. And, and we you do it on that. purpose, we too, because that. we don't like to read. It's designed. It's designed. If you're not really focused on you wanting to learn that shit and then do it, it's designed to make you be like, I ain't doing this. Yeah, but you know well, what? And it's designed to only give you a little bit of information. So even if you think you know what you're talking about, you don't. And okay. it caused you an even bigger problem than what it would have been. Cause now you think that you want to write and you argue with something that you're totally wrong about. I've seen that before too. It happens a lot. You know why? Because people take blocks and pieces of information as you say and they run with it like they know it all but that's not even how information works 
because we right. in, in like just in, for instance a dictionary there's many different type of dictionaries so you can't say you know all the words and all of the things because there's so many different languages we're not even equating that once a lot of our black people once we know one little thing i know this that's just the way it is you know that's like all right it was this character out here i don't know if you ever heard of him it's i don't know if i told you about him his name was nature boy and he was like no, never yo pulling this coke shit. basically he was online pulling the coke stuff for the last five years he was up in um different countries like um different islands and going there and, and these teenagers and young adults would go out there talking about they learned about metaphysics and things he just basically was a cult member okay so finally he got kicked out of all these different countries he got back to atlanta this dude not on a cult member bisexual all types of sex cult allegedly make a long story short like a lot of us black car people been watching him we've been like damn he gotta go to jail people dying around him babies dying is it is not a joke like it's bad but we can't do nothing because we don't own the system and he was outside the system so peep this he came they made him come back to america he got no other place but to be in the a got the whole coat there they got ran down on okay because one of the girls finally came to america and told like ah he armed me yeah 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 and he put it on a public platform so that's two charges so i'm like boom it's content creators that's making videos about this because we don't even want to talk about this. You see what I'm saying? This shit is serious. So I left a comment like, yo, you need to just get all your videos together and just forward it to the Atlanta Police Department. You ain't got to really be involved. It's just because you know these people don't have their stuff in order. Never. You see what I'm saying? So literally, I got a comment. This is just all about the comment. The person said, well, he don't need to do that because I believe he going to be in jail. He ain't got no bond. I said, baby, go learn law. I said what I said. This black people, but this nigga could come out. He could beat the charges if they don't have no evidence. Exactly. People think, and then, and then it could be crazy because, like, remember what I said before? It's like once you get locked up, it's not you innocent until proven guilty. Oh, if he wasn't guilty, they would have never locked him up. I done been around a lot of dudes. Like, when this did, I got life sentence. When I read their transcripts when they went to trial, people came on the stand and said they didn't do it. He didn't kill this person. He didn't do this. And they still found him guilty. They excluded. He's still in life they, he they, didn't do it. They, and that's when you're talking about evidence, how the judge pick and choose what evidence they're going to let in. And like, honestly, it, it, I don't know like, the criteria. It just be crazy. It's disrespectful. But, but in that aspect, when they want somebody, they're going to have somebody. But at the end of the day, it yeah, should be some true. form of, they, they pull evidence. At the end of the day, if you telling on yourself, because after all that time you sitting, either you doing a plea bargain, because that's where they get most of the black men locked up, because they let them sit before proving guilty, and y'all be they sitting so long, like bump it, I'm just going with this, take this, you know what I'm saying? I'm gonna take this plea bargain. That's how a lot of people get in the system because they can't even get out like that. So it sometimes it's the evidence, sometimes it's just the waiting game. You see it a lot. You see it a lot, yo. They be playing people. This whole system pick and choose based on what they want to apply at the time. So it'd be a turn. It'd be a turn off. So, like I tell people, it is not going to be any law. It ain't going to be any regulation that's going to stop this from happening. It's got, it got to be the heart of. It got to be the heart of man. Period. And that's not being all spirit. It's the truth. We have these laws. It was the black code set up. Then it was the red lining. This was the people applying the laws, and these and, it, and some people wasn't applying the laws. But it, it depend on the person who in the position, and you know who in position. Um, I want to just make two points. Um, so I'm a lawyer, and I'll deal with that in a second. But I'm sure, I mean, I, I'm sure I'm not the only lawyer that watches social media. We file lawsuits. I'm going to let you all in on some lawyers. So we file lawsuits to do what? To scare people. Mm -hmm. Because most people can't afford it. They can't afford the cost of litigation. They can't afford an attorney like um, uh, the gentleman, Daryl. And so that, so we do that. But when knew instantly that he wasn't lawyered up, because the first thing we would tell you is shut your mouth. Mm. Be quiet, because all of this social media stuff, all this Patreon, that's 
evidence. There's evidence. No lawyer in America <laughs> is going to let you go on Patreon for four hours, this platform, that platform. Plenty, I have plenty of, you know, most of my friends are lawyers. Plenty of them will take the case just because we sit up and estimate, mm hmm, you know, this is a fool. I can drain him for about $40,000 with his wow. dumb behind going everywhere talking because you know you're going to lose and you're going to have to settle. But before I lose or settle, I'm going to drain him for $45,000 and pay down my house. Now, I'm just keeping it real. <laughs> so anyway, I didn't mean to dominate no, I, I, the things you learn in law school. If the facts aren't on your side, scream as loud as you can and pound on the table as, long, as loud as you can to try to distract everybody from the actual facts. Our former president, our, the, the, the one that we just got out of there. Okay. He is, I think, probably the most litigious person <laughs> that most people are aware of. And if you if you stay abreast of some of the things that he has done and been doing, you'll see that's a tactic. He does it all the time. Bec and most people will cower down. Sometimes all I have to do is send somebody a letter and, and they'll back off or they'll send the money or whatever because that's, most people are average people and that's what they will do. It is the rare person that says, who's, who's not a lawyer, um, you know, or a paralegal. So it's the rare person that says, well, let's get it. Yeah, <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? And answers them. And that's why you, the people who don't have the facts on their side, they usually back off. Well, oh, absolutely. You are, um, you are entitled to do so, but we have a saying in the legal profession <laughs> and it is, um, the man who represents himself has a fool for a lawyer. Hey, forming well, him. Well, 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 who was that Black Panther, a a Angie Davis? She represented herself and she got off. So it's not in. Yeah, no, no. It ha oh, it happened. Absolutely not. And listen, most of this, I mean, I went to law school. It took me five years to graduate because I went part time. But listen, you don't have to. Um, to go to law school to represent yourself because everything, especially now, everything is online. You know, we have big old big case books with 500 pages, you know, really? for each subject. Most everything is on, my son is in law school right now and he's in an on, he goes to the same law school I went to, but he's in an online program. Everything is online. Anything you need to know um, or want to know is online, but, but, that, that there is still great value um, yeah. in having a good a good lawyer, but it also not just because of our knowledge, but listen, we have the relationships, and you can't underestimate that. Remember, so I'm an African American woman. We are all we are all in the bar associations together. Yeah. We party together. We go so so I know the district attorney because those are my friends that I went to law school with, you know, or or whatever have you. So do you see what I'm saying? I, uh, listen, it could take twenty years, <laughs> thirty years. I mean, it, listen, that even if someone gets a, and I'm you know, you know, I'm not saying my name, but even if somebody gets. 